Okay, so I'm a bit late on this, but hey, better late than never. Now chapter 5 has come to a close, and now we're heading into chapter 6. For the most part, the battle passes this chapter weren't that bad. If anything, they were pretty solid. But there were some skins that I enjoyed, and some skins that I did not like. So let's do a tier list on all 32 of the battle pass skins of Fortnite chapter 5. You already know how this goes. We got the ass tier. This is where skins that are either annoying or just absolute trash. The mid tier, where I consider these skins mid and would not run as much. The good tier, where I consider these skins pretty good or decent enough. The fire tier, where these skins are amazing to look at and run. And finally, we got the Fortnite tier. These skins are what I consider to be as absolute peak. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, time to piss people off with the first entry of the ass tier. And it's Peter Griffin. I'm gonna be straight up with you here. He's level 10 annoying. Like, it was fun at first to play as this dumb bastard, but as time went on, I quickly got tired of seeing him running rampant in the game, to the point where I get, if I get gunned down by him, I'm going to crash out. But in terms of how he looks, I don't mind it much. Why the fuck do we need a Ripley reskin as Poseidon? He's obviously the weakest link in the battle pass, and he just does not look that good. If anything, he's absolute trash. Same with his song Swim Free, that is also trash. The beat is fine, but sonically is boiled ass. If anything, I would have been fine if Meowsos was presiding, was presiding instead. And I'm gonna piss off even more people. Yep, Doom is also on this tier list, and he does not look that good in my opinion. It was bad enough that they added the Isle of Doom into the BR instead of having his own LTM, but just seeing so many Doom skins run on and rampant around the map made it even worse. The only cool things that came out of Doom's set with a fist of doom glider and the pickaxe. Everything else was made at best, trash at worst. And unfortunately, doom falls straight into the trash tier of doom. But yeah, that's about it for the ass tier. And surprisingly, there weren't any bad or awful skins in season three's battle pass. Rock on season three. But let's see if that'll change in the mid tier. We got Mr. Tony the Tiger from Frosted Flakes. Yeah, I did not bother using this skin at all. Now it's not bad or awful, it's just mid, and it just doesn't look that interesting. Even his edit styles wasn't enough to save it. Not really the kind of skin that I would run, but the glider is pretty cool to use. Even with the diamond crusted edit style, Montague is still not a valuable skin. He's not bad, but he's definitely not a skin that I would call cool or interesting. If anything, he's just a mid tier skin that I would not ever run. They did Valeria so dirty when it comes to the story. Because she was the main reason behind everything that has happened throughout chapter 5. She was the main one who opened Pandora's box, causing the gods to appear. I wish they would have done more for her honestly. As for the skin itself, she's okay, and she did get the most cosmetics and edit styles in the battle pass, so there's that. Now we got the tier 1 skin of season 2, Cerberus. Has anyone told Epic that he's meant to be a 3 headed dog? Either way, he's okay. Not only a skin that I would really use, but I do like his second edit style. I think it was smart to have Korra to be part of the battle pass instead of Aang. They learned their lesson after what happened with chapter 4 season 2. As a skin, she's totally fine. I have no issues with her. But just like with Peter Griffin, she and Aang became really annoying in BR. Almost every match in season 2, I got clapped by those two fuckers, to the point where my view on them dropped down. Rust? More like dust. That's exactly how I view him, as a dust collector in my locker. I mean, the only thing that's good about him is the shirt he's wearing, which was one of the teasers of the Metallica collab for a Fortnite festival. And Peabody is no different, although at least he's better than Peter Griffin in Poseidon, that's for sure. But his edit styles aren't that interesting either. He's just another skin that I don't see interest in using. But that's just me though. Just like with Valeria, Megalodon was also done dirty in terms of story. Except unlike Valeria, he didn't do shit for the story. He was betrayed by Doom at the end of season 3. Plus he does not look that menacing, he's just a bulky ass nitro drug addict. Bulky skins were never a thing for me. So yeah, he definitely fits well on his list. Mysterio is pretty forgettable in my opinion. He has an okay design for a Marvel character, but his mythic shotgun was mid, and even his entire set is mid. Everything about him is just both lame and forgettable. But that is just gonna be it for this tier, now on to the good tier. Starting it off is Undercover Jones. He's actually the first Jonesy skin I own, and I do think he looks pretty good. 
The fit he has is pretty cool, and I was not expecting for him to have a beard, but it works well for the theme of it. And the second edit style looks like he should be in L.A. Noir. At least that's how I see it. And it was pretty done well throughout the story too. So yeah, they actually did him justice, even if he became a secondary pro tag of Chapter 5. Solid Snake is unfortunately my first Game & Legends series. Seriously, they need to stop neglecting the Game & Legends series. But yeah, Solid Snake was also done pretty well. I also think his second edit style is pretty cool. It's basically the older version of himself. Now, I don't follow the Metal Gear Solid series like that, but him being in Fortnite is just as cool as him being in Smash Bros. I was a bit iffy on Medusa's design, but when the Battle Pass came out, I slowly warmed up to it. She actually looks pretty good. Not the best Medusa, but she's certainly not mid, and her second edit style looks really cool. They just had to make Zeus look like a Chad, huh? Well, I'm not complaining much. He looks pretty good in my opinion. Both edit styles to be precise. Not much to say about him other than the fact that he looks good. I'll never understand the hate centered around Ringmaster Scar. She ain't even that bad of a skin. If anything, she's pretty decent. But her second edit style is even better with or without the hyena helmet. I don't want her that much, but she's still a nice looking skin. I know I said I don't like bulky skins, but T60 power armor isn't all that bad. He's obviously a game and legend series since he's from the Fallout series. And after playing as him, I don't mind it that much. He's pretty much an exception when it comes to bulky skins. I think they did him very justice, just like they did Magneto who was also on this tier. And I'm glad they added him into the battle pass because his Magneto power mythic was so awesome to use. Plus Magneto is one of the most iconic characters in the X-Men series. He's also the final Marvel skin to be a battle pass exclusive. So if you haven't gotten him when he was out, that sucks big time. And I genuinely mean it. Hopefully they'll find a way to bring him and the other Battle Pass collabs back. Wolverine is a pretty clever mashup of Peely and Wolverine. While not the best mashup, he's still pretty solid. Arguably the best meme skin in Chapter 5 hands down. And no, Captain Jones does not count as a meme skin. But I will say, he's a really cool mashup of Jones and Captain America. Do we really need a Marvel mashup in a Marvel Battle Pass? Probably not, but Captain Jones isn't a bad mashup. Like I said, he's really cool. War Machine's fine, nothing much to say about him, but his mythics were really busted during Season 4. I do like his glider though because of the second edit style, which goes really well with Optimus Prime. With that being said, time to go into the great tier. For a new character to take the place as the main pro tag, Hope was done extremely well from a story standpoint. Plus, I'm digging the fit she's got going with the dark blue jacket and skirt, but the second edit style is even cuter. Pink and white is a perfect combination. Nisha was also a skin I was looking forward to playing as. I like the mask edit style she has, as well as the other edit style she's got going. Overall, she was done amazingly well. Easily the best battle pass skin for season 1. Artemis is easily my second favorite skin in season 2's battle pass. I absolutely love the galaxy style she's got going on, but her second one looks even cooler. She was done very well, even the rest of her set is really good to use. For a tier 100 skin, Hades was done extremely well. I like both his green and purple edit styles, especially the purple one because you know, purple is my favorite color. But that's about it for the great tier. Now it's time for the highest tier, which is the Fortnite tier. These are what I consider to be my all time favorite battle pass skins in chapter 5. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. I can confidently say that Aphrodite is the cutest battle pass skin in all of chapter 5. The white and gold really complements each other. I admire the midriff when it comes to these kinds of outfits, and her wearing sneakers is pretty odd, but not bad. And I like her second edit style, but her default style is even better in my opinion. Easily the best skin in Season 2's Battle Pass. I love playing as the Machinist. She's so awesome to look at, and her neon edit style is so sick. She's a really good tier 1 skin, but her voice really caught me off guard. I mean, she's cute and all, but... Jesus Christ, I couldn't keep a straight face when hearing her voice for the first time. Yet another Bright Bomber reskin, and this time, she's in Season 3's Battle Pass. Bright Raider looks really awesome, but her pastel's edit style is super cute. Even with the helmet on, she's still a mixture of badass and cute. We got yet another Tier 1 skin, and it's none other than Gwenpool. When I saw the leaks that she was going to be part of the second Marvel Battle Pass, I was stoked to see it happen. The amount of edit styles she has is just amazing. I especially like the cel shaded edit style. Even the Gwendolyn Pool edit style is top notch. 
And of course, her Dark Gwenpool is good too. I consider her as my favorite of Season 4's Battle Pass. Emma Frost is hella sexy, even in Fortnite. He's not really made of frost, but more so diamonds, just like Montague, except he's not on the level of greatness as Emma herself. Her all diamond edge style is very nice and clean, but I wish we would have gotten a transformation emote to fit her. Still, I don't mind it that much. She's still a very amazing skin. And finally, there's Shuri, the new Black Panther. Now, I do own both Black Panther skins, and they're both amazing, but I do like Shuri just a bit more. From her transformation into Black Panther, to the reactivity, and even the Contrail is top notch. She's easily the most badass skin in Season 4's Battle Pass, and the fact that she's a non exclusive Battle Pass skin makes it even better. But that is going to be it for this tier list. Uh, <laughs> let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm really hoping I. I really don't hope I do piss. I don't piss like, everybody off, like because of the placings. But hey, what you gonna do? But that's gonna be it for the tier list. Let me know in exactly who is your favorite uh, battle pass skin from Chapter Five. Uh, definitely sound off in the comments below. Uh, I'll be reading them all to see. Uh, but until then, this is Starter Protagonist signing out. As always, Goki Genyo, and have a startastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.